welcome back to the channel. Well, coming up in this episode, I've been doing a bit of crop rotation. Yes, I've been moving my squirrel feeders uh, back around in different locations, putting a, a trail camera out and just seeing if there's anything around. Well, today I've been over at the airfield woods where I've had a trail camera for a, a couple of weeks, keep, keep feeding the box with some nuts and some maize. There's a couple of clips uh, at the end of this sequence uh, so you can see that the usual suspects are there. So uh, hopefully, after a very early start and a cold start this morning, uh, they were going to turn up and uh, read the script. So I'll catch you later on. So as I said, there's three clips here from the trail camera. So there's the usual suspects there. Again, once again, he's there. There was also a crow backwards and forwards. And then the final image is there. You've got all three there of what we're looking for. So uh, I'll leave you with the video. Hello and welcome to the hive. Today is Sunday the 28th of November. Um, it's minus two degrees here at the moment. I got here at half past six uh, in total darkness. Got managed to get set up in the dark. It's quite handy when I've been to the woods so often. I sort of know my way around now. So um, when I came here to fill the feed up the day, I did make sure I cleared away all the broken sticks that are on the path in. So that saved a little bit of noise coming in. Fortunately, I didn't disturb any of the roosting pigeons above me. So that's a plus. So the feed has filled up. The memory card on the trial camera is full, so that can only mean there's been lots of action here. So hopefully we'll have something later on for you. So thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you. So this was the start of these fellas giving me the right run around. Uh, eventually catch up with some of them, but it was almost as if they know you're pointing something at them and then they move at the last second. Also in this video I've turned some of the sound off because there's continuously a dog barking in the background um, which was quite annoying so that's why some of it is quite quiet but uh, I do put the sound back on to hear the shot. So this was the first fella and obviously if I'd have moved to focus the scope he would have probably seen me that's why I had to leave it as it was because he was a good way off back far from that tree. And then a few minutes later, the first visitor of the four-legged variety attends the box. Now, I couldn't see this from uh, my position in the hide because he came down on the blind side of the tree. So it wasn't until he actually comes around the edge of the tree that I just caught a glimpse of his nose. So I've seen two come in regularly uh, and also two at the same time on the camera. So I know there's a pair of them. So I was expecting at least to see two today. So again, he's still hiding from my, my position. Now I can see him. And I don't think I'd change the clock. So I think the clock is an hour out on the rifle scope. This, as I say, it's still quite dark here. So that's him sorted out. And I'll go over to the rifle. Again, so I've taken the, the sound off, but I do leave my rifle in the right sort of position. As it happened, he was right where the crosshairs were, purely by luck. And when I first spotted this with the thermal, I just thought it was a bird or something. You could just see the tip of its nose. Uh, and then obviously looking through the scope, I just got, there he goes again. So I've loaded up. And it's just a case of wait to see on the the trail camera footage they've some of them have been nicking a nut and then sitting on the roof and some have been doing that vertical hanging and it's a lot of stuff oozing out of there and he drips it all into the nuts that wasn't very nice so this is now this is chasing these fellas around that one gets one sorted out straight away there was about another five of them and from now on they went absolutely berserk and once again as soon as you point something at them they either know that you're pointing something and they fly off or they do this hiding behind a stick routine 
Um, and I've had to cut loads and loads of footage out because this just went on for probably the best part of 40 minutes. These fellas showing up and then as soon as you line up on them, load up, line up, off they go. There he goes. And again. And it went on and on and on. Very frustrating, but it is it is fun in the end of the day, I suppose. It's nature and it's their way of keeping on the move. But it does make it a bit frustrating. Oh, there we go. Now this, this girl, this is another female, and uh, she came and started, she thought, obviously been watching the birds and thought, well, if they're gonna give him the run around, I'll have a go as well. For some reason, there must have been something at the, the tree that the feeder was on, because she wasn't committing herself to go there. I thought, well, we're on, we're on for it here now. So she gets up to here, and that's it, puts the brakes on. And it's one of the, I bet everybody's shouting, shoot it, shoot it. But I, I prefer to get them when I know they're going to sit still. But there's obviously some, I don't know what it was. I couldn't see what was going on around that base of that tree. She couldn't see the, the dead squirrel because that had gone down the bank way out of sight. I don't know what it was. But for some reason, she wasn't going to sit there for very long. I thought, well, shall I take the shot? So thinking about it I'd load it up off she goes so that if you look on the clock that's 835 and then by luck I happened to leave the rifle fixed where I last saw her come out 847 I think that says on that clock and this is what she did previously she just sat there and, and watched across to all that where that tree is so I thought well, I'm not going to give her the benefit this time So that was the two that I knew I'd seen on the, the camera, so I was quite happy to get those. Always always having a look around before you do any sort of talking. But um, anyway, so it's been a bit of a steady morning. I've seen two squirrels on my trail camera footage, so I'm happy that I've sorted both of those out. There was a larger one, which was the first one that I shot. Um, and then the smaller one, which is probably the female, the second one. A um, couple of bonus magpies, so that's, that's all good going. So uh, it's now quarter to nine, as I say, I was here at half past six this morning. So I'm going to have a cup of tea and probably give it till about half nine and then call that on a day. So uh, tea time, and I'll see you later on. Thanks for watching. As I was getting sorted out and starting to pack stuff away, um, I just happened to notice something moving around on the ground so you obviously can't see what was going on on the ground um, because this camera's not not down there but again this fella comes up on the blind side of the tree and I thought this one was behaving as if it was a, a, a newcomer because it wasn't that um, quick in committing itself to go for the nuts it was very sort of skitterish and almost as if it wasn't too sure whether it should be there or not i think when they flick their tail like that it's a bit they're not sort of happy about what's going on around them this one turned out to be a female as well so there was two females and a male that i managed to get today see what I mean she's not that sort of clued up on where the actual food is on this box oh, I'll flick over to the rifle scope and you can see what what I could see now on the floor again I've, I've turned the sound off because the dog was persistently barking it was a good sort of 700 yards away but I'd need to turn the, the sound up on the scope 
so you could hear me. Um, and I'm not, I'm only about 19 yards away from the tree, so I can't talk very loudly um, for the, the, the fear of sort of scaring these things off. So rather than just putting a very quiet whisper on there with lots of hissing and dog barking, I thought this was probably a better option. Um, I so said she didn't this one didn't seem to go straight at it knowing where where the food was so it, it sort of led me to think that perhaps this was a new one so with that in mind I've left I'm going to leave the feeder here anyway and see leave it another week and just see if anything else materializes I like going up that blind side of the tree for some reason. Not sure, is she? She's not sure about something. And so the old tail starts flicking around again. And a good sniff, see who's been around. smell food but I don't know where else it is. Perhaps it's in the top here. No. Nope. I thought she's gonna sit still there, that will be my chance because knowing my luck It had done a runner like the others. So that tidied that up and I was quite happy with that. I packed up and um, set off home. So thank you very much for sticking with that. And there's another interesting morning for me. And my next session is planned back at the farm because I actually heard for myself visitors up in the office roof space. So uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Take care of yourselves and stay warm. It's getting cold. See you later. Cheerio.